everybody, welcome to Brick Vault. Today in front of us is an absolutely epic build, being the UCS Ultimate Collector Series Resurgent Class Star Destroyer from the First Order. And it is my favorite vehicle, in fact, to have come from this latest Star Wars trilogy. It feels like out of all the ships to come from the original films, when they tackled the Star Destroyer again, it looks like they made nothing but improvements to this model. And I mean that purely from an aesthetic point of view. Just looks-wise, this thing is is almost twice as big as the original Imperial Star Destroyer. It's got 10 times as many guns and features an open hangar in the front, very similar to how a Venator class Star Destroyer is uh, is designed. So it kind of feels like the First Order took the best of both worlds when uh, the original sort of Star Destroyers were out, the Imperial ones were taken, and then the Resurgent class came along and the First Order really made these ships a focal point of how the entire organization operates. This project uh, has been many months in the making and the original design came from Commander Keller. He did an absolute knockout job when building this model internally and externally. And right off the bat, guys, if you want to build this model for yourself, the instructions can be found at our web store. That's www.brickvault.toys. Included with each purchase are the PDF step-by-step -step building instructions, a digital parts list file that can be uploaded on online to instantly order the pieces that you're going to need to make this thing. And it also has a PDF file for printing the UCS sticker as a little plaque on the side. Buying instructions is not just a great way to help support us here in the studio, but also the incredibly talented designers that we work with like Commander Keller. And that's it. I just really want to talk about the details of this build now because there really is a lot to get into. There are some absolutely excellent angles and details to appreciate right off the bat in case you are curious. It is 42 and a half inches long or 108 centimeters, 20 and a half inches wide, 52 centimeters, and just over 10 inches high or 26 centimeters. So it is one massive build, very close in fact to the original UCS Star Destroyer, though much, much, much more detailed. What initially struck me when I first saw this model is that I found the designer, Commander Keller, really had a good eye for a composition between studs and not studs on the surface surface of this build. By all accounts, it really does look like the Resurgent class Star Destroyer is a pretty smooth ship when you look at it from afar. But at the end of the day, this is an industrious vehicle and it's only smooth in places where I suppose it makes sense for the ship to be that way. And in reality, when you look up close at it, there's a lot of little bits of greebling hanging out here and there. So the designer here chose to add studs in certain places intentionally. Obviously some of those wedge plates, uh, they're totally necessary to have. And then upon closer inspection of just about any area of the ship that you zoom in on, you'll find that there are actually quite a lot of interesting little build ideas thrown into the surface that's supposed to make up the initial armor or sheet metal. Like I said earlier, there are a lot more layers involved with this ship altogether. Some of those are a little bit wider or thicker like the original Star Destroyer, but there's actually a lot of subtle shorter layers that arc around the entire body. If you follow this line right here, the wing plates in fact outline several different angles that move in and out and parallel also along the edge of the ship. In this way, the combination of layers that are just one plate or one tile thick combined with the much beefier stacks as they kind of move up towards the bridge gives the Resurgent class Star Destroyer a much more fluid look and it simply feels sleeker. It feels a lot more modern than the predecessor Imperial ones. So with the combination of obviously wedge plates and wing plates and many different types of tiles. I'd like to show some of these highlights. Upon closer inspection, you can see bricks that are built on their sides using brackets. Obviously there's jumper pieces, modified plates with lips, and even the use of that interesting Nexo Knights shield piece that pops up here and there. Commander Keller didn't just pay attention to the flatness or the studness of the, of the surface, but really he spent a lot of time and made a lot of conscious decisions to create ever so slight subtle details that keep the surface smooth from afar but varied from up close. It's really a fun mock to get close up on. Those black pieces, actually I won't even tell you, I was about to tell you what they are. Uh, those I believe are turbo lasers but maybe you can guess what they are from this angle here. And then he employed an incredibly interesting and somewhat painstaking technique to put on in order to get those thin edges of the uh, 
that side of the ship where all of those tile pieces are clipped in by little double clips that are built sideways. In fact, let me just take this opportunity now to say that the internal structure of this ship is built so much better than that of how the original UCS Star Destroyer was put together. If you watched one of the old videos when we talked about how the internal structure of that original UCS set bows and nearly breaks those Technic bricks from long ago, you can actually see, at least with those clip pieces, those tile pieces like I just showed you, uh, that that brick built wall basically uh, the side built bricks goes all the way through the entire body and it's heavily heavily reinforced you will not see the internal structure of this ship bow uh, over any course any amount of time also it makes this ship super easy to pick up and move around from a to b you can pick it up by the stands or you can just pick it up by the belly minus of course the dome on the bottom sorry about that i totally got ahead of myself i want to knock out all the close details first and really uh, i need to talk about the hangar there's that front hangar where a lot of the TIE fighters can be seen flying out. I really like this area of the ship. Uh, it's probably one of the most unique things about the Resurgent class Star Destroyer when you have to compare it to any other large Star Destroyer throughout the Star Wars universe. And those crisscrossed beams that you have from the original universe, uh, that look is achieved with a lot of different gray old car door pieces. Now when you get a little bit lower and you look at the different layers right where the top of the pizza slides slice hits the bottom of the pizza slice right towards the center you'll see just a little bit of trans blue tucked in there i believe that's the opening where finn and poe escape from in episode 7 and he even managed to get some of those angular walls to match up with the crisscross cheese wedge pieces uh kind of going back and forth on those layers it's absolutely awesome if we ever get ambitious enough to light this thing this is definitely one of the first places we're going to be focusing on because it'd be awesome to see a nice little blue glow coming out from the side of the ship but now it's time to shift our attention above towards the bridge and the whole command center area with all the sensors and generators that you would normally see the head for the resurgent class star destroyer is sunk in very much so into the body of the ship and of course the bridge has been reinforced considerably so they don't have any more fiascos like what happened to the super star destroyer now this is my favorite part of the ship though not just because i think it actually looks pretty darn good good aesthetically but the way this was put together the building techniques are very simple pretty I mean pretty simple on the inside but you have an amazing set of angles for all the different wedge plates that outline that hammerhead like shape I tried to capture uh, how this head pops out of the body from as many angles as I could just so you could see just how precise these tiles and plates match up together. This really isn't an easy series of shapes to put together in such a wonderful symmetry and not only did Commander Keller uh, I think successfully pull it off very successfully but the build itself didn't actually feel very difficult and I cannot imagine how he could have achieved those angles in a smoother fashion it just looks amazing. There's just the tiniest amount of slightly built up greebling to show off uh, some of those sensors right at the top and then I also wanted to show you this shot going from the tip of the Star Destroyer all the way up towards the front. There's hardly a gap between any of those spaces as you move up the entire body. Every single angle it feels like if there was a space to fit even one tile on its side he managed to get something to fit into uh, the whole ship just because you know having that split down the middle can be pretty distracting if you see other builds and then I love that technique right in the very back with the modified plates that have that little lip they even crisscross or tooth into each other somewhat now that we're kind of in the back we might as well check out the thrusters just like the original Star Destroyer there are three main very large engines that propel the whole thing and as you look a bit closer there are several smaller thrusters that a company the main three big ones. I think it's an interesting choice that Commander Keller decided to not include any of the trans blue. And then I suppose the last bits of detail worth showing off in this ship all are on the bottom. Every Star Destroyer has the same bulge coming out the direct bottom of the ship. This was designed in kind of the old fashioned style brick built technique with or plate built technique I should say. So it's completely studded around but that look is very consistent and it makes you know a pretty much perfect sphere shape. When you're handling this mock, I would say this is one spot that 
that you probably should not uh, pick up the model by. Just the support structure isn't really set up that way. Pretty much everything else is totally fair game, just not this dome. I probably don't have to tell you, but the stand is built into the body. This isn't something that you would ever detach. And I'm happy to say that you can easily slide this model around. Uh, I don't feel at all like I need to handle this thing too gingerly. It's big, obviously. It's heavy, obviously. But delicate is definitely not in the vocabulary when I think about this ship. In fact, right as I was finishing off the beauty shots, you see this light here? Uh, it happened. That light has a, has a way of uh, detaching itself from the stand, and it landed on the nose. Surprisingly, only a couple of little pieces fell off, despite the fact that it was indeed a direct hit. That little piece fell off, and I think another little wedge plate. And upon rebuilding, which took all of 30 seconds, uh, just a few of those plates on the inner side, a couple of those mixel joints kind of snapped off, and I just popped them right back in. So you can take it from me, this model can <laughs> somewhat take a beating, though I would not recommend it. I just want to close by saying, remember, you can get the build instructions for this map massive, massive model at our web store. That's www.brickfault.toys. And if you guys like our content, you can always like or subscribe. Let me know what types of builds you'd like to see in the future. And we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.